uh, we have seen under temperature measurement, uh, thermometers using the properties uh, of uh, the physical dimension uh, changing. Uh, secondly, we have seen uh, the uh, electrical property that is the thermal EMF, uh, the thermocouple junctions and their uh, properties and the different pairs of thermocouples. Now we are going to see uh, radiation uh, in resistance thermometer. First, we will see resistance thermometer, and then we will see radiation thermometers or radiometers. So, we know all metals uh, follow uh, the rule um, uh, similar to uh, uh, similar to our temperature uh, coefficient of linear expansion. We also have for metals temperature coefficient for resistance. So, the resistance increases as temperature increases for any uh, any metallic uh, many metallic material. So, that is a property what is made use of. So, when temperature change, the resistance change and that is uh, made use of to measure the particular temperature. Now, that is uh, resistance is change according to this formula R is equal to R 0 into 1 plus alpha. Alpha is the temperature coefficient of resistance into T minus T 0, uh, where R 0 and T 0 are resistance and uh, res re resistance at temperature T 0. R 0 is the term resistance at temperature D 0. So, R is the resistance at unknown temperature T. So, by using this equation, we get the relation between uh, increased resistance from a uh, known resistance for a given temperatures. For any unknown resistance, we can get it. So, this is the property, physical property what is made use of. Uh, so, when uh, we subject a resistance into a temperature bath, uh, its resistance is changing. So, how to uh, convert this resistance change into voltage change? This we already learnt under strain gauge. So, when the strain gauge is pasted on any stressed member due to strain, the resistance is changed. The resistance is changed into voltage by using Wheatstone bridge or AC bridge. So, similarly here also, uh, the here, here it is a resistance element. So, by, uh, the, re the resistance of the thermometer is connected as one of the arms of a four arm Wheatstone bridge. So, when the resistance is, uh, uh, previously we can balance a bridge. And uh, for any other temperature, they, it is going to change, resistance will change, one of the four arms will change, hence the imbalance will be there, and the imbalance voltage you can measure it. Or in another way, we also have to measure, this is what you are going to learn, that is uh, here, the, the, there is basic difference between strain gauge and the res, strain gauge resistance change and the thermometer resistance change. Their strain is of the order of the microns and also the corresponding change in the resistance also is very less. So, from 120 it may become 119.5 or uh, 120.5 or 120.6 or very small change only is there in resistance of the, st uh, of the uh, strain gauge resistance. Whereas, the resistance used for the thermo I mean uh, temperature different temperature change, there is large change of uh, resistance is there in this thermometer. Uh, the those uh, the that uh, uh, I mean uh, the thermometer using the resistance is called uh, resistance thermometer. And you have got under these two groups, one is metal, uh, only one is conducting material, another is uh, semiconducting material. The semiconducting material, uh, there is a negative change, coefficient is negative and it is very large, more than 10 times. Um, so, in the, uh, the thermometer, the resistance change is uh, large. When you compare thermometer resistance, the, the resistance change is very large compared to resistance change in strain gauge. So, so, there we have derived an equation for imbalance of uh, uh, imbalance voltage of a bridge when we use a strain gauge. Assuming the resistance change is very small, we neglected dr by uh, dr term uh, and uh, higher terms we have neglected and then we have, de and then we have derived an equation imbalance voltage uh, E is equal to um, E g epsilon E e g epsilon by 4, 1 by 4 for a, um, the, for a um, um, quarter bridge, this is equation E is the excitation voltage, G is the gauge factor epsilon is the strain, that is imbalance output voltage. This is valid under the under the condition dr, the resistance change in the resistance is very small, is very small. Then only the uh, G into epsilon you can also write a delta R by R, that is G into epsilon we can write this. So, under the condition delta R is very small, or delta R by R small this is valid. That means, E will be proportional to delta R. Uh, since all other things are constant, expedition voltage is constant, original resistance is constant. So, uh, output voltage, imbalance voltage is proportional to delta R. That is uh, what you have derived. Under the assumption, delta R is very small. But here in the resistance, in the resistance thermometer, it is a, delta R is not small one. 
hence it is no more valid. So, no linearity, no linearity in this equation. So, the bridge there for strain gauge it is operated in null mode of operation, uh, in deflection mode of operation. This is a bridge network for strain gauges uh, were used, are used in deflection mode of operation since imbalance voltage is proportional to delta R. But here since the output voltage is not proportional to delta R, we cannot operate it in deflection mode of operation. It has to be operated only in null mode of operation. This is what is written here, null mode of operation. So, for what is null mode of operation? That is what is depicted in uh, diagram A. Uh, we find uh, four resistances are there and R3 we will let us call it as the resistance of the thermometer which will be subjected to different temperatures. So, uh, now when, uh, so when originally we balance it uh, to 0 and when we are subject to any temperature, then uh, we find uh, some voltage will develop here, imbalance voltage. To bring it to 0, adjust R4, adjust R4 uh, so that uh, e, EO is uh, brought to 0. Now, how much adjustment is required in R4 to bring the ba balance back is called the uh, null uh, deflection uh, null mode of operation null mode of operation that is here deflection is uh, uh, zero that is called null mode you will have the reading zero to bring it zero reading how much uh, resistance you have to change and the amount of change required is an is a measure of the temperature uh, measure of the temperature of this arm that is the uh, null mode of operation but uh, the drawback here uh, in this null mode of operation is the uh, when we change this resistance the um, uh, wiper or the um, okay the contact point is moving over here resistance when it moves at different uh, uh, at different position of the coil it may have different uh, contact resistance so that will form part of this uh, r4 uh, part of the fourth arm or uh, fourth arm of the wheatstone bridge so any changing resistance will be also we included which is not due to the uh, uh, temperature change in r3 so uh, uh, that contact resistance will be an error source for this type of instrumentation. How to avoid this contact or varying contact resistance? The, for that, we go for uh, circuit B. So now, since contact resistance in the uh, fourth arm, it is included in the it is included in the loss of uh, in the loss of the bridge or balancing. Whereas, uh, if you put it uh, uh, if you put a, po a potentiometer somewhat like this, against uh, which we uh, uh, operate this contact then we find the contact resistance is no more in the one of the arms, it is in the null mode, this is a uh, path where under null, under balance condition zero current. So, the contact resistance will be in a zero current path and uh, hence it will not affect this, uh, uh, affect this uh, ba balancing. That is when R3 is changed, uh, then we move this contact uh, up and down so that the balance is brought back and how much motion is required is a measure of the uh, temperature R3 or uh, uh, temperature where R3 or RT is immersed. Now, here you find the for a given motion when we move, move suppose we move just above that means R4 is increased, R1 is uh, decreased to the same extent. So, balancing will be quicker than in this case. Here suppose you have to move say 4 mm for a given resistance change to balance it. Here if you move half the half of it is sufficient because here is increase, here decrease, both uh, both of the effect, both uh, the effect will bring the balance quicker. So, half the travel is more than sufficient. Anyhow, the problem uh, what we had earlier, the contact resistance in influencing the reading is no more there and uh, it is uh, the contact resistance, uh, the resistance is distributed against R1 and R4 and the contact resistance is uh, along the zero current path. So, this is, this circuit is better than this circuit, so more accurate uh, reading. But in actual practice, you will find there is some uh, change, some uh, difference in this circuit. So, we take uh, the R3 to a, dis uh, to a distant place from the say control room. So, the lead wires are brought to the control room for building the bridge there. Then you will find this uh, contact uh, the uh, leading wires may be subjected to this is one temperature T1, this may be another temperature T2. So, you will find that due to T uh, temperature T2, the resistance of this uh, lead wires also may change that forms part of the uh, R3 arm of the bridge. So, that will affect the balancing of the bridge. So, and uh, that uh, is not due to temperature in R3. So, this is an error source. Whenever the lead wires are subject to different temperatures, accordingly the resistance change 
and that resistance also is to be uh, is uh, is interfering into the signal of the instrument or uh, for that also we are adjusting here which is not the case uh, uh, that is not the temperature where r3 is subjected so it is an error source to avoid this siemens introduced this so called siemens three lead circuit where you find the uh, uh, the zero current uh, this is the output zero current um, uh, line also that is this line also brought to the furnace so this is this may be the furnace where we are measuring the temperature so you find uh, um, uh, the third arm uh, lead wire is there and zero current also uh, uh, wire also is taken there and uh, then this wire is coming so at any cross section you will find there are three wires this uh, is called three lead wire circuit so due to any temperature now this may be t1 t1 and uh, suppose you have some other temperature t2 what is the effect t2 is affecting three all the three wires and two wires the the n two wires this wire forms part of r3 and the other wire the other extreme wire forms part of r2 that come come point is here point is brought here so two adjacent arms uh, uh, wires are uh, affected in same way so same change in adjacent arms of which one bridge has uh, uh, no effect in the imbalance voltage this we have learnt already uh, only opposite effect in adjacent arms will give rise to voltage but here two wire the two end wires uh, which are which are in adjacent terms are subject to the same temperature so so it same temperature resistance change it will not give rise to any uh, any voltage output in the imbalance uh, due to imbalance of the bridge so uh, similarly you will find the middle wire which is zero current uh, zero for under balance condition is zero current uh, line uh, the whether it uh, resistance increase or decrease it does not matter so you find the error introduced here in this circuit c is nullified by having three lead wire what is done is this common point the point this junction is again brought to the same chamber so that you have three wires and uh, two wires are adjacent arms having similar changes giving rise to no imbalance so that so the uh, ingenious design was done nowadays this is what is adopted so this is the uh, uh, circuit for this is finally d is the circuit for the null mode of operation so uh, the resistance thermometers um, are used in this way and uh, if we want to use the resistance thermometer in the uh, in the uh, deflection mode of operation the non linearity see we told it's no more linear since delta r is very large it's no more linear but uh, if you want to use uh, in deflection mode again deflection mode then non linearity should be reduced so here is a circuit where we can uh, reduce this non linearity of the uh, of the uh, um, deflection mode of operation for uh, this is a circuit more or less similar but you find the re re resistance ratios are taken somewhat like this as per doblin i r1 is equal to r2 is equal to 10 times r3 and 10 times r4 so r4 uh, r1 and r2 will be 10 times the value of uh, the, the thermometer resistance and then r4 ohm but one more thing what is done is uh, this also an ingenious uh, design that um, uh, uh, non linearity for a given range suppose this instrument is used for measuring 0 to so 1000 degree centigrade then at uh, subject this uh, middle of the range so it it will be put at 500 degree centigrade so the thermometer resistance will be put at 500 degree centigrade and now adjust am uh, am r4 so that e will be zero the voltmeter connected uh, to read the imbalance voltage the voltage will be zero so it will be so this is the reading so this may be 0 degree this may be 1000 degree and uh, at 500 degree 500 degree the voltage red is zero this is zero voltage actually zero voltage so the graduations are like that so uh, wherever the pointer stops you write it as 500 volt it is zero volt but it is a corresponding to 500 degree centigrade now the any increase in temperature pointer will move this direction on decrease in temperature the pointer will move the other direction so you find the non linearity is between 500 and 0 and 500 1000 so non linearity is reduced nearly to half the total non linearity by this design that is having uh, made r4 uh, adjustment in r4 so that uh, balance is obtained for the middle of the range we reduced the total non linearity into half previously for 0 to 10 1000 if plus or minus 5% non linearity now if by this design we can reduce to 2.5% of non linearity by ingenious uh, this method 
having zero reading, zero voltage for a middle of the reading, and uh, later on the voltage, the minus voltage or this plus voltage uh, accordingly from uh, it will reduce the total nonlinearity to half the to nonlinearity for the full range. This is the design what is done. That is for the conducting material. Suppose uh, mostly we find uh, the uh, platinum, the resin thermometer, is, uh, is, uh, the wire is made up of platinum, platinum, nickel and copper. These are the commonly used uh, material for this resistance thermometer and uh, that uh, uh, coefficient of um, coefficient of temperature, temperature coefficient for resistance uh, you, you can refer to books or it is around point not not. Uh, 0.0039 and uh, this is double that value nearly double the value 65 and uh, this is around 0.0043 uh, something like this. So this is the uh, coefficient that is we find nickel will be having uh, much more uh, much more sensitivity much more sensitive than the other two things for a given temperature change and um, the other one is called uh, thermistor when we use uh, the uh, semiconductor 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 material when you use for the resistance uh, then it is called ther uh, thermistor resistance thermometer and these are thermistors thermistors use the semiconductor element as resistance element as i told uh, they have got very large uh, negative coefficients as temperature is increase the resistance falls down and also it is very steep more than 10 times the coefficient is uh, coefficient temp temperature coefficient temperature coefficient is uh, is 10 times 10 times than that of uh, material than that of conductor 10 times that of conductors conductive material or metals or metals skins you find uh, is uh, often used uh, to measure temperatures uh, between uh, 60 kelvin and uh, 2000 degree kelvin this is a normal range where semiconductors are used uh, and uh, below 60 degree 60 kelvin uh, people are using carbon resistor carbon and uh, uh, carbon resistors below that is cryogenic temperatures are measured by using carbon resistors silicon and uh, silicon uh, silicon crystal and germanium crystal germanium crystals they are used for uh, cryogenic uh, temperature measurements. Yeah. That is regarding this resistance thermometers and thermistors. And now we go to radiation, uh, radiation thermometers, radiation thermometers. As you have already pointed out earlier, this is one of the properties of materials. Uh, that uh, radiating capability is changing with the temperature. So that is what is made use of uh, in this type of thermometers and that radiation uh, is uh, uh, the all those thermometers using this radiation they are called radiation thermometers or uh, radiation pyrometer yeah, the radiation also called radiation radiation pyrometer simply or simply radiometer it is also called radiometer thermometers using the radiation uh, of the hot bodies uh, they are called by these different names and the physical principle is any body above uh, 0 kelvin radiates that is the basic principle any body above 0 kelvin that is all bodies are some temperature are there so they uh, they give out radiations this radiation is picked up by this instrument and uh, the amount of radiation gives rise to brightness and it is uh, being made use of that intensity is made use of in uh, in uh, predict in uh, in identifying the temperature of the hot body. Now, in the um, uh, in uh, in collecting this radiation, there are uh, some error sources, and, uh, and another thing, this radiation thermometer is a non-contact type. This is very important. It is a non-contact type. So far, all the thermometers what you have learned, we have to bring the thermometer in contact in contact with the body whose temperature is being measured whereas the radiation thermometer we only uh, focus it towards the hot body. So hence you find uh, this uh, radiation thermometer are used to find the temperatures of, of the distant bodies that is heavenly bodies or any moving object 
uh, we can stand in one place and we can find the temperature of a move ejection of a moving body or the uh, uh, gas output of the moving body uh, the for example when missile uh, missile is uh, on the flight uh, you can trace it by uh, collecting the radiation from the exhaust of the missile so uh, it's an essentially non contact type but uh, when we uh, when we use these uh, radiometers or radiation thermometers for measuring the temperature of the heavenly bodies the radiation is passing through the atmospheric conditions there the some of the radiations get lost or reflected so it gets absorbed for example carbon dioxide moisture dust all these uh, foreign all these all these uh, uh, presence of all this material is absorbing the they it's absorbing the radiation and then uh, the amount of radiation received by the thermometer say by the objective lens is reduced this is one drawback in this uh, radiation thermometer second drawback is the uh, the radiation thermometers are calibrated by, by having black body by having a black body which uh, gives a uh, maximum amount of radiation for any given temperature with that it is being uh, calibrated where emissivity for a black body emissivity that is emissivity emissivity, emissivity is nearly 1 is nearly 1 for black body but uh, when we use the same uh, calibration for uh, some other bodies say heavenly bodies or distant objects then we should know the emissivity many times emissivity is gay is guessed uh, for example i mean it is because emissivity is a function of of uh, the surface uh, con uh, surface shape and uh, density surface roughness and the angle at which we focus we we collect the uh, radiation all these forms uh, all these affect the uh, emissivity of the body so uh, the engaging the emissivity we made uh, made some error hence you will find in calibration also uh, there there will be some error these are the two error sources and uh, the what what is done in this radiometer is a set of uh, radiation is collected from distant body and it is made to converge uh, by having this object objective lens it is made to converge this is the radiation going and it is made to converge on a uh, point at the focal point of the lens systems but at that place where it converges uh, it has to be detected the radiation is to be detected then we should to have so called radiation ra uh, radiation detectors radiation detectors this radiation detectors we have got two types one is thermal type thermal type and then photon uh, uh, photo so photo cell or are based upon photon okay these are the uh, two principles the thermal type is nothing but a black body we have a black body what is written here so it's a black body black and uh, black and uh, surface will be there it will absorbing the full uh, the uh, all the radiations falling on it and uh, it uh, the black body temperature is raised since radiation is falling temperature is raised at same time the black body will give heat to the atmosphere and it attains one temperature for one uh, one uh, type of collection of the radiation and uh, that temp uh, that temperature is measured by uh, yeah, so called uh, thermo Uh, say thermo uh, thermopile yeah by thermopile or resistance thermometer a set of thermopile we know is a set of uh, uh, thermocouples four or five thermocouples in series uh, or uh, well, it's called uh, bolometer yeah it's called bolometer bolometer is nothing but it is one made up of thermopile or resistance thermometer resistance set of resistance thermometer the bolometer uh, uh, name because it is uh, it, it will having a time a very less time constant it will be very quickly um, uh, respond to the radiations that is bolometer but it is nothing but thermopile where the mass is uh, very small when mass is small that um, uh, then it is time uh, time constant is very small time time or response is small Uh, so it is called bolometer so uh, such a uh, uh, says temperature sensing device is uh, put Im embedded in this black and body and from that the temperature of source is measured that is the thermal uh, thermal type thermal type of radiation detector is based upon black body beta whereas in photon we have got again uh, three uh, three principles uh, photoconductive 
photoconductive I will write it here photo photoconducting photo cell and uh, um, photovoltaic cell photo electromagnetic cell photo electro magnetic cell. So, these are the three types under uh, photon detectors under photon detectors first one is as the light uh, as the radiation falls on this photoconductive uh, uh, cell uh, it, uh, it its resistance is changed that is photoconductive principle and uh, then amount of resistance change uh, is uh, sensed and that will uh, tell about the amount of radiation it has received and then photo cell when it receives the uh, radiation it develops a voltage and the photo electromagnetic cell is kept in a strong electromagnetic a strong magnetic field and when it receives any radiation then the voltage is developed these are the three principles under which uh, the photon is made use of photo for uh, photon detector is made use of to detect the uh, the amount of radiations falling on uh, the falling uh, uh, amount of radiation collected by the thermometer but there is some basic difference between the thermal type and photon type thermal type is sensitive for uh, is sensitive to the total amount of um, uh, radiation it is no more uh, function of the wavelength of the radiation and uh, before that the what is the wave wavelength uh, for this uh, radiation thermometer it is uh, um, 0 0.32 0 0.3 micron to 40 micron this is the normal wavelength range uh, in which all these radiometers all these uh, uh, radiation thermometers are functioning we know the visible light is visible light is 0 0.32 0 0.72 uh, micron this is the wavelength of the visible light white light so called uh, it is uh, uh, it is having the wavelength in this range so it is beyond this visible light as well as the uh, infrared rays it is called so, uh, uh, 0.72 to 0.72 to 1000 it is infrared rays now the electromagnetic waves uh, their wavelength uh, um, how they are distributed in our uh, 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 how they are distributed you can just see it here 0 0.3 to 0 0.72 uh, micron uh, wavelength uh, wave of, of this wavelength of electromagnetic waves represents our visible light region where we have got a vibji or all these colors are put over uh, looks like a white color that is all that is the range of the wavelength and for infrared rays the wavelength is 0 0.72 to 1000 micron 1000 micrometer is 1 meter 1 millimeter so 0 0.7 to 1 millimeter wavelength uh, electromagnetic waves that represents infrared the, that is below the red red color infrared region and uh, the for, uh, for our um, um, thermometers radius thermometers what we are using is 0 0.3 to 40 microns this is the wavelength of the electromagnetic waves made use of in the uh, in the uh, in the radiation thermometers now we find the uh, that is it contains both visible region as well as infrared region and the ordinary glass normally what we use for the white light or the visible light they are um, opaque for the infrared rays hence the lens for these uh, radiometers what i have drawn else there uh, they are made up of um, uh, pyrex glass they are made up of it is not ordinary glass it is pyrex glass fused silica fused silica and uh, material and uh, calcium fluoride something like that these are the special glasses which can uh, transmit the uh, infrared rays so they are all radiometers uh, glasses are made by from this material it is not ordinary glass since ordinary glass is opaque and above 1000 micron uh, micron it is wave, it is microwaves now we have uh, the we were seeing the radiation detectors thermal detector it is uh, it is insensitive to uh, insensitive to wavelength so whatever the wavelength it receives correspondingly it gives signal whereas the photon detector it is sensitive for the wavelength so the amount of uh, the heat uh, amount of resistance change for, for example if it is a photoconductive cell the amount of resistance change uh, depends uh, also on the uh, wavelength of the radiation it has received 
because in certain wavelengths it gives more output in certain other wavelengths for the same amount of radiation it gives a less resistance change hence you find photon detectors can be used only uh, for a certain wavelengths alone other wavelengths of radiation it will not uh, uh, it will not respond hence you find uh, the thermal detectors are um, uh, often used but the problem with thermal detector is it doesn't uh, change with uh, change in radiation it's uh, it's a temperature it's a slow process um, that, that is the only thing. Photon detectors uh, are very quick, very quick to uh, respond to radiation, whereas thermal detectors, they are little sluggish. That is the drawback. Now, we see the construction of one such uh, radiation. Uh, uh, you will uh, see the, the, here it is the construction what is given here um, of an ordinary uh, radiation thermometer. This is ordinary radiation, where we have got the hot body. This is hot body. And from here, the, the um, radiation received by this object, this objective, the lens nearer the object, it is called objective lens in, op in optics. So, objective, it collects the radiation and uh, converges to the blackened, uh, to the focal point where the, uh, the thermocouple junction itself blackened to have the mass, small mass that is blackened, uh, junction itself mass or body and uh, that thermocouple will be connected in series there it, where it will be calibrated in. Uh, terms of temperature. So, um, uh, there uh, the output will be in DC. If the DC uh, magnifying DC, we have problem of drift. This we have learnt in the amplifier drift. So, avoid the drift, what they do? This uh, incoming radiation, it is being uh, chopped. So, you will have the ro blade, number of blades rotating in the path. What I drawn it, it will be perpendicular to the board, it will be rotating. Uh, it, so it will be somewhat here. The two blades, so probably it will be here, and the blades are coming like this. So you find the uh, for certain duration, the uh, uh, for that is between two between gap between the two blades, the radiation will fall on the uh, detector, and uh, when the blade is uh, obstructing, then no uh, radiation will fall on it. So alternatively, blade and the gap will be coming as it rotates at different speeds. So now you find the uh, previously the voltage output was like this now that is the our uh, the suppose e output voltage from the thermo uh, thermopile or bolometer is e versus time now same thing is made into uh, waves so it, this is uh, here when the two blades are um, uh, when there is gap the full vo full uh, voltage will develop by thermopile and uh, that is between blades it is cut or uh, uh, now uh, we can also say the, the blade also has uh, certain radiations. So, you can find that is uh, alternatively blade. So, radi the, the detector is uh, exposed to alternatively to source as well as blade. Blade also is certain temperature, it also radiates. That radiation also is picked up by the, uh, the, the blackened thermo, uh, black uh, thermopile junction and it is being, uh, you can calibrate it of, uh, by having a black body you can uh, calibrate this temperature and uh, for any unknown uh, body temperature you can use it this calibration and detect it so by having this uh, cho this uh, rotating blade or so called a cho chopper and we can convert this D ac a dc voltage developed in the pile into ac and later on we can use uh, we can amplify it and amplify voltage we can read conveniently in any other voltmeter and you can calibrate the voltmeter in terms of temperature Another version of this uh, the radiation thermometer is optical pyrometer. This is optical pyrometer. This is also often used in, in, locating, in finding the furnace temperature at different height. Uh, what is the temperature of furnace? Then you find uh, this uh, is used above 700 degree centigrade because a manual visual uh, manual uh, observation is there that is possible only when temperature is above 700 degree centigrade. This type of thermometer, the radiation uh, radiation thermometer. Is a read up to say 2000 degrees centigrade. Up to that, it uh, they are used. Here, uh, this optical pyrometer up to 4000 degrees centigrade. This is the range of this instrument. Here, uh, the principle is the to look at an object. So, it is a, a white object. We require a black background. Then only you can see this object. Suppose the background also is white. This also white. Then the chalk piece uh, disappears. We say. We in, the, in the vicinity, in the, since we do not have any background, the object uh, disappears. That the background also same color, it disappears. So, it is called disappearing filament thermometer. Some, sometimes it is called disappearing filament thermometer also. Because you see the, here is a filament, 
through which current is passed through this battery by adjusting the resistance. So, when the current flows through this uh, filament, it glows and that uh, intensity brightness, when it coincides with the brightness of the radiation, the radiation is received from the distant object, it is made to fall at the filament, filament is at the focal point of this objective lens. So, when it falls, uh, the target uh, is uh, made here with its own intensity and brightness. When the filament brightness and the brightness of this both match and then, then filament temperature is assumed to be same as the object temperature. So, uh, what is done is you will be observing this is this will be an object for this this is a micro microscopic construction in combination with this objective what is done this is purely microscopic construction that we can see from here. So, we have got a red filter that is only one color only one color that is red color alone is is, is, uh, uh, is made use of for this. Uh, that is red filter made use of for this operation. Uh, now, uh, the uh, now you after we focus to a distant body, uh, then adjust the then you can see the filament. Now, current is not sent and switch on the circuit and adjust this current, uh, adjust this armature, uh, adjust this resistance so that current is um, increased. And uh, at one current flow, that uh, glowing of this will be matching the intensity of this uh, radiation at that time it will. Um, at that time it will uh, disappear and that is the current um, current which is read in this ammeter uh, which is calibrated in terms of that the, to make it disappear you have to send so much current and uh, the, at that the temperature of the filament or the temperature of the body is identical and that is what is calibrated whatever is ammeter uh, that uh, ampere is calibrated in terms of the temperature of the body that is how this is made is of to this is all the other things are construction aperture amount of radiation is can be controlled and here also we have got a microscope also an aperture this is eyepiece so by looking at it by adjusting a knob you can change the resistance and make it to disappear at that time whatever current required is the uh, amount of brightness is proportional to the current and that is proportional to temperature so temperature is uh, written in the, in the ammeter so that's how it is made is of since we require some visible uh, I mean uh, some uh, brightness already uh, to sense this uh, filament that is there only above 700 degree centigrade. So, above this it is made use of this uh, you have to find the temperature by manual adjustment. Then uh, the last one we have we so called digital temperature sensor. The last two sensor what you are going to learn under the temperature measurement is um, digital temperature, digital temperature. sensor. See, it may be remembered that uh, we have learnt one method for measuring force uh, by digital means. We are sensing the force itself by digital. For that, we are using one string, uh, fixing a string and uh, when we pull, apply a force, this ring vibrates at different frequency depending upon the force and by connecting a permanent magnet, we have found out the, we converted the force into frequency and uh, that frequency is picked up by the magnet and uh, forming uh, other circuits we have sensed the force in terms of digital signal itself. Similarly, for temperature also we have a means by which uh, it is sensed by digital way itself directly so that it can be given to a computer. And that is based on the property say piezoelectric quartz crystal for example, piezoelectric piezoelectric uh, quartz crystal. We know this uh, quartz crystal is made use of in the oscillators. Uh, that oscillator, oscillator is one where we can produce signal at different frequencies. And um, in a crystal, in a crystal, we have also got so-called crystal oscillators. There you will have a quartz crystal as uh, means uh, to have that particular uh, particular frequency. They they will have only fixed frequency, either five kilohertz or uh, 3 kilohertz normally used uh, for this instrumentation purpose 3, 3 kilohertz. It is for uh, for one frequency only one crystal oscillator will be there and that depends upon the crystal dimensions. By controlling the crystal dimension uh, we can get these 5 kilohertz or 3 kilohertz whatever it is. So, it will be forming part of the so called the circuit of the um, uh, this uh, oscillator, oscillator circuit. We know the property of quartz crystal is when temperature is changed that uh, uh, natural frequency of quartz crystal is changed. So, by having that uh, uh, particular uh, uh, thickness, we can change the uh, we can change the frequency frequency of the oscillator. 
So in, uh, an oscill in oscillator what happens, quartz crystal is uh, kept in uh, temperature controlled oven. So temperature control controlled oven so that uh, quartz crystal is at a given temperature so that it uh, its natural frequency does not change. That is omega n of the crystal is, uh, is uh, not changing. Then only you will have the constant output frequency from the oscillator. That is the oscillator circuit. I am not drawing the oscillator circuit. You can get any uh, any electronic books, standard books. But uh, the, I am telling only the principle. But instead of keeping the quartz crystal in the temperature control oven, you put the cross quartz crystal in the probe tip and then connect in the same circuit. We will have the same circuit of the oscillator. But instead of keeping the um, quartz crystal in the temperature control oven, you keep it at the probe tip where probe tip is uh, immersed in a furnace whose temperature we are interested to measure. So now as temperature is changed, the frequency of the output of the oscillator will change. Previously crystal oscillator, as crystal oscillator we had one frequency, but now as the, uh, the digital temperature sensor, its output frequency will be a function of the uh, temperature of the furnace where we have uh, put the uh, quartz crystal at the probe tip. So now the uh, the quartz the output of this uh, crystal circuit the digital uh, I mean uh, uh, oscillator circuit the output of the oscillator circuit uh, will be given will be read in an electronic uh, universal electronic counter where the frequency can be read or it can be stepped up or stepped down so that we get the reading corresponding to the temperature. This is the principle. That is when we read this frequency output in an um, uh, in a uh, universal electronic counter. And the later we can have circuit there itself to step down the reading or step up the reading until we get a number corresponding temperature. This is what is extra it is done. Otherwise, it is same circuit as the oscillator circuit. But instead of keeping the quartz crystal in the count temperature control oven, it is put in a probe dip and where and the probe dip is put in an oven. Hence, we by using the same oscillator circuit and uh, measuring the frequency and uh, stepping down the frequency to have the same reading, we have we achieved the uh, the digital temperature sensor that is the principle of it. With this the temperature measurement is uh, will uh, is close it is come to an end. Yeah.